Good morning. I'd like to call the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. It is Monday, October 19th. Uh, we're at 8.33. I'm going to ask uh, Selectman Havana to lead us in the pledge. First order of business. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Charles. Okay. Item two is public forum limited to uh, three minutes on any agenda item. Anybody wishing to address the board? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to item three, approval of the minutes. We have two sets of minutes to approve. 3.1 is approval of the October 5th, 2015, which was a regular meeting. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any additions or corrections to the October 15th regular meeting? Right. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. 3.2, approval of the October 9th, 2015, which was a special meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any additions or corrections to the October 9th special meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Right. Gentlemen, thank you. Item four, Finance Director, Sheila Volano, receive report uh, for the month of September. Good morning. Good, Good morning. You look um, puzzled. I am puzzled because I don't have a packet. Well, I have a packet with nothing in it. Um, I, I have... You've got to talk to your staff. I know. Well, I, I have a few things, um, but not revenue and, and expenditures. Does anyone oh, have I didn't print it. I, I, ha I have it on my uh, iPad. Oh, Mitch came to the rescue. That's fine. It's all that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know under, understand. I, I know you're trying to save paper, but <laughs> okay, we're in business. Okay, good. Good morning. Good morning. Um, okay, so we're 25 percent of the way through the year, and um, as far as revenue goes, we've collected 53.1 percent of our budget compared to last year. We were at 53.5. Um, so. Um, this is the first time in a couple of months we've been a little bit under where we were last year. And that really just has to do with the correction that we made in the tax collector's um, uh, receipts from July. Um, so that, that, that brought the tax collector down a little bit from at this point last year, 53.7 this year versus 54.2 last year, very little. But, um, and I will have this number for the Board of Finance. I know that we made a correction to September last year, um, after September, because we usually, you know, we, we, um, we correct um, any um, mispostings when we do our bank reconciliations, it's usually the following month. So um, I'll, I'll consider that, and I'm, I'm sure that we're probably back ahead of where we were last year once that's taken into account. So it's nothing, it's, we're still in great shape as far as tax collections. Um, and all the other departments are strong. Um, fire department, 24.2%. Don't forget, they're supposed to be oh, at 16%. Right. Yeah, so they're actually ahead. Um, and um, town clerk is, is ahead at 32.2, and um, building department at 31.6, so the departments look strong. So we actually think that the fire department is building 50% more through three months. I grant you it's three months, but that, that, that's way up. They've always been behind because of the lag. Right. It, it, it could easily be timing okay. in terms of deposits. Okay. But it is a good sign. Not certainly not a bad thing. So revenue is spot. It looks good. Sheila, I have a question. Um, under engineering, stump dump, site sales. Yep. There's an $8,400. Credit for revenue on the actual uh, revenue year to date. Could you explain that? I believe there was a correction between site sales and um, we don't sell any. I know. Uh, okay. So the, I think that this came up last month and we made a correction to fix it. So there, that's the credit, and the the uh, other side of it is probably um, in the in the right place. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. So I'll take a look at it. But I I know that it came up last month and there are no site sales at the stump dump. So that is most likely a, a correction. Okay. Any questions on revenue? Okay. 
Move on. Okay. Move on to expenditures. Mm -hmm. We, um, at the end of September, 37.8% versus 39.7% last year. That's quite a bit under um, where we were last year. Um, and it's, um, it's really just timing at this point. Um, there were no storms yet in September last year, so we're, um, we don't have that um, issue as far as the comparison. But um, there really is nothing that I could see right now that's driving that. Um, you know, even debt service is actually a little bit ahead of, you know, it, 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 we've expended more in debt service and that's strictly timing and we always expend all our budget there, so that's not really a problem, but there's, there's other departments that are, um, all the big departments are basically a little bit lower than where they were last year. Um, Fire is 26% versus 24.2. They're the one department that's slightly over. The others are all under. I have a question on their um, capital. You want to turn to that page? Park. I don't have the backup, but. Okay, park and rec. Yeah. <clears throat> Building maintenance. Uh, oh, we have a encumbrance of 77,000. 189, we don't have a budget against that. I'll look at that. I'm sure that there, if, the, if the, I don't have the backup, of, okay. unfortunately. Okay. But um, I don't recall the project that it's for, but there would, you know, there, it, it could be encumbered to the wrong line item. Looks like it. Because it, there wouldn't be a $77,000 purchase letter if it was, there was not a, right. a budget. And I just, right. I'll, let, I'll let you know with the. Okay. I don't remember the project. Sorry. Just, uh, obviously, we'll come up with the Board of Finance when they take a look at it. So. Yeah. So okay. You can get back to us later on that. Yes. Okay. Of course. All right. Um, and the other question I had was regarding copiers. Mm -hmm. and, um, if I can find my place. <clears throat> We're twenty-five percent through the year, and it looks like the copier payments exceed that amount is that normal well, about 40 percent it could be because they're paid on a quarterly basis so if there was two quarter you know that we paid the second quarter that would bring it over so that's a timing issue then. that's that's timing okay. yeah because they're they're on a contract so okay. yeah it, it, it would normally be 50 if we made the other quarter payment but because of the the per copy fees that go with that that's mm -hmm. why it's a little bit under so it's it has to be one quarter lease payment okay. additional. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on expense? Okay. Talk um, about insurance? Yeah, we'll take a look at the um, insurance. So um, we're, we're actually doing well compared to budget, but we, don't forget, we, we're, um, we're now, we now have Board of Education members on HSA, so that's dropped the plan cost and, and the contributions from the Board of Ed as well. Um, but even with that, in my annualizing three months' worth of claims, we're um, projecting a $321,000 surplus at the bottom. Um, my little column for um, claims greater than 75000 which is 50% of the stop loss, um, shows that we're at $255,000 worth of claims that exceeded the stop, exceeded the 75,000, 75, I'm sorry, but did not make it to the 150 yet. So we haven't utilized the insurance at this point. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Any other questions with the finance director? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Item five, town engineer, Jim Portland. Mr. Portland. Good morning. How are you doing? How's everybody? Good. How are you? Five weeks. Sort of. 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 Sort Number 15PSX0168 for the purchase price of 69.93 a ton. 
Sixty-nine ninety-three a ton. So much. Okay. Uh, as you all recall, back in selectmen, we back in uh, in July, we we approved the uh, order of six hundred seventy-two tons of the treated salt from Krog, which is the capital region council of governments at uh, eighty-seven dollars and forty-three cents a ton. We've been waiting this time uh, for the state to get their bid in for the rock salt. Um, as uh, as noted, they we came in at sixteen. Nine ninety-three. We had uh, uh, expected that it would come in at about sixty-nine dollars a ton. So, uh, working back from the forty-one thousand dollars we appropriated, we're going to just uh, request an order of uh, five hundred ninety-two tons. Pretty close. We, we you know we usually get six hundred tons, but we'll just get this stay within budget at this point. If we use it, we use it. If we don't, it should be very nice. And then it saves, right? <laughs> then we <laughs> <laughs> well, we have the place to store it and everything. We right? have the place. Yeah. So we have we have to we have to make a commitment to buy this. Yeah. And they they have to set it aside for us. So um, and we've already uh, as I said had a approved purchase of rock salt, but we through a little bit of quiet <laughs> negotiation we've got the uh, Morton people to drop their price from uh, eighty seven forty three to eighty seven fourteen. That's just Tommy just nagging at them. And so uh, <laughs> it is recommended the Board of Selectmen approve the purchase of the Ice Bee God Saw from Morton at 8714 and that you rent, uh, approve the purchase of the Rock Saw from Cargo under the state contract for $69.93. We have a motion. I would move that we uh, approve the Rock Saw at $69.93. Do we actually have to approve the other at a lower rate that we approved before? <laughs> if we have to, if we legally have to approve it at a lower yeah. rate, I, I recommend that we approve the um, uh, treated salt at 87.14. Second. We can put that in the form of one motion. That's fine. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? See none. A call for vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Jim, uh, discuss and take possible action. The contract with the paving company for uh, paving of Chatfish Island. Right. What paving company are we talking about? We had uh, a bid from Tilcon uh, under the state contract for Chatfish Island Road. As you're probably all aware, all these paving companies are working 24 hours a day practically. And they won't, they really won't have time for us to squeeze in that little road, little road for us. So we went out and uh, took three uh, local companies, Atwater Paving, Premier Paving, and Arrow Paving, showed them the job and asked for them to quote on just the, uh, just the, uh, <laughs> just the paving. We would pay materials, we would pay, we pay materials under the state bid price for processed stone and then for the asphalt. So they're just going to do the fine grading with the processed stone and then they'll actually do the paving. Um, apparently only two of them were, were not busy enough to do the uh, give us a bid and uh, uh, premier paving was a low and he was eighty nine thousand eight eight thousand I'm sorry nine hundred dollars for that work we, he's worked for us before he does a nice job I would recommend the board of selectmen uh, award the contract to premier paving for eighty nine hundred dollars out of curiosity what was the uh, um, telecom price telecom price which which included the materials oh, uh, right. but so it's a uh, but I went through the analysis, and it's it's pretty darn close. The one thing I will say, they uh, took on underwrites part of their paving by giving a lower price for actual delivery of materials when they do the job themselves. So they, I guess they, they don't have to they schedule it all, and the price for material is pretty good. But the price uh, just for Chaffee Island is twenty nine thousand four hundred sixty one dollars and ten cents. So it came out pretty close. So, as I said, I recommend the Board of Selectmen authorize paving by Premier Paving. I like to get it done while the weather is still pretty good. Then we can finish the landscaping and done. Um, I'll move that we approve the paving of Chaffin Child Road from Premier Paving at $8,900. Second. Any discussion on the motion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Tim, when will we do this? Uh, within the next week and a half. By the end of next week. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. We got one more item. One more item. Consider take possible action on the agreement with Durham Middlefield Transfer Station 
to brine brush at the town's leaf and brush disposal site. Uh, we know as a stump dump. Stump dump. Okay. We, um, and we don't have any stumps there. But that's <laughs> name it carries forward. Um, last year we changed uh, the grinders. We had used uh, South Central Regional uh, uh, Planning Agency, their tub grinder. We kept getting delayed, so we started our relationship with, with Durham Middlefield. They were terrific people to deal with. I called them up this year, and they would like to continue the same price as we got for last year. $400 an hour with a not to exceed figure of 15000 which is a pretty good price. So I, uh, I would recommend the Board of Selectmen approve use of the, the grinder from Durham Middlefield for the same price as last year at $400 an hour. Uh, and I don't think it'll run to 15000 because our pile isn't as big, but it's still sizable. And I want to, you know, we did it this time last year. Put together the way we grind it, then the materials there for people who want to mulch their beds and whatever. They, you know, it's, good, it's a good product that the people in town are eligible to pick up at their own. You know, they pick them up. It doesn't cost anything. So I'll move that we approve the use of Durham Middlefield grinder, four dollars an hour, not to exceed fifteen thousand. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. All right, James, thank you. Good, thank you. Any uh, any word on the completion of Route 1? Yeah. Uh, they're working on it. They, they had started way back at 139 where they were you know, they're working their way easterly. Uh, as of Friday, they, I think they were just about Route 22. Yeah, okay. I have nothing over the weekend. I know that. I don't think so. No, no. I know that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we move on to item uh, 6, I had forgot to uh, ask the board to add uh, to the agenda the uh, request for a sign. Uh, you all have that in front of you. Could we add to the, uh, item, uh, item 9.4? Do I have a motion? So yes. moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, item 6, Golf Course Superintendent Ted Ty. Good morning. Good morning, morning Ted. How are you? Good. Okay, what do we have, Ted? Um, I'd like to possibly take purchase of a multi pro sprayer. Um, this piece of equipment is 17 years old. Um, I've been talking with Ralph Casey down the Public Works Department. Um, it's starting to get hard to get parts for it, and it's probably one of the most important pieces of equipment on the golf course uh, regarding spraying uh, fungicides and fertilizers. <coughs> Um, right now, like the, they have a fairway mower. It's down there. It's about 17 years. Also, um, they've had it for six weeks down there, presently right now, waiting for uh, parts for it, an alternator and a starter, which are all on back order. Which I have another piece of equipment, which can back that up. But like the sprayer, I don't, I don't have a piece that can back that up. And if we uh, run into a situation where it's five or six weeks. Um, but we're waiting for parts for it, and we could run into some issues uh, regarding spraying um, our greens at the golf course. So that's why we're um, looking for payment. I mean, uh, possibly purchasing a new one. <clears throat> Who are you recommending we purchase a car? Um, I have three bids basically um, Turf Products Corporation, John Deere, and uh, Jacobson are the three main suppliers uh -huh. um, to the golf course. Um, turf products came in at 31.4. John Deere came at 34.6, and Jacobson came in at 35.1. <coughs> I prefer uh, Toro equipment because there is a supply, uh, there is a warehouse up in Enfield, Connecticut, which I can get parts fairly quickly for. <coughs> okay, so you're obviously recommending. Um, the Toro. The Toro at 31,451.61. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at the budget, unless I'm incorrect, the finance director, the director can correct me on this. I see a $29,000 budget. Correct. I talked to Sheila about that. Um, we can take 29 out of the capital and possibly move 2400 out of a, my new equipment expense active account in order to pay for it. <clears throat> Where is that? In the golf course account. 
Out of their own funds. Out of their own funds. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Has the golf course commission signed off on this? They know. Yes. That I'm. I'm pushing this forward onto you. Yes. Okay. But have they signed off on the the shortfall coming out of their budget? Because this is coming out of town uh, taxpayer dollars of twenty nine thousand. The rest, the shortfall is coming out of green fees. Well, so. it's coming out of our new equipment budget and our account. What new equipment? They have a new equipment line item, line item. in their in their own uh, budget for five thousand. Which is it's normal. Um, they, uh, I don't see that it's 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 a problem for. We, we haven't usually had a sign off ahead of time by the commission. It just it falls under their budgeted funds for new equipment in their account. Okay. And there is enough allocated. Okay. When would you need this sprayer? Um, basically, we've been kind of milking it along this year. So uh -huh. It would be nice to have it for next year. <coughs> so you'd need it for next spring? Mm. Okay. Because you know, Ralph's after talking to Ralph, we're looking to put in five or ten thousand dollars into it and in our old one if we if want to do that. <clears throat> okay, what's the lead time after your order? How long does it take to get what some of the parts? No, the, no, the new, one. new one. <clears throat> oh, I, I don't really know as of right now, but I, I, I know I can get it by spring. I mean, if we do purchase it. So you don't need it for the fall? No. Okay. I mean, basically the season's somewhat winding down. It's a, kind of a That's summer. Sure. <laughs> okay. Joe, I know Gary. you had a letter out to the commission asking for an RFP for a, a potentially changing management process mm -hmm. uh, with a request that it comes in either the next meeting or the meeting after. Mm -hmm. Is this something that we could table and talk about with the commission members present, or is uh, I know you indicated that whatever happens, if it if it's outsourced or not, we would still need the piece of equipment. I guess I I don't know if we could combine those discussions by having commission members present. Um, I don't know the answer to that, Gary. Really. You know, it depends how the RFP is put together. Right. Well, that's why it's worth perhaps tabling this at this point in time. It's not something that they need this point yeah. or the next one. Mm -hmm. You have to have that discussion. If we don't know the answer, right. let's find out the answer. See, the RFP <clears throat> is really intended to get a management company to run the golf right. course. Understood. Now, there are certain ways that golf that RFPs have put together for golf courses. Uh, one way would be for a management company to come in and just take it over and then give the town a certain amount of money to take over the course. Uh, an, another way would be for us to pay a management company to run the golf course using our equipment right. and our help. So, so yeah. I, we got to see which way the commission is going to put out the RFP. And they've been working on it now for, Pam, you've been involved with that for about six to seven months. And I've asked for a status report uh, to see uh, if, how far along they are, <coughs> excuse me, in putting the RFP together because we want this to be ready for the next season. Because as we all know, financially, the golf course keeps losing money. And uh, this board has been very aware of this. The Board of Finance has been very aware of it. And uh, even though it's, it's a lovely course, and it's, uh, it's a great asset to the town, but it's a cash drain on the town. And the commission, in response to your letter, uh, dropped off the score Friday. OK. OK. Response to my letter. OK, I haven't seen the response yet. So this would make okay. the request move. Yeah. Uh, gave me the scope, but I'm sure it was prompted by the letter that was issued. Okay. So, 
Oh, I guess I would request that we table okay. this until the next meeting. Okay. I, 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 do ju I just have one question. The, the agenda says this would be purchased off the state contract. Correct. Were, were all these bids off the state contract? Correct. Okay, so they, so any one of them would have been state contracts. Correct. Okay. okay. I'll second the motion to table. Okay. All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Ted. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll send a, uh, a letter this afternoon to the commission, let them know that we've tabled it and uh, a reason why. Okay. Good morning. It is now. <laughs> Item 7, Town Planner. George Call received for discussion the Coastal Resilience Plan. You see, we have Kevin McGee with you. Right. Uh, we Good have morning, our, Kevin. Morning. We have our uh, project team, esteemed project team here this morning, just in case you uh, have questions that they want to uh, respond to. Uh, Nathan Froling from the Nature Conservancy. Morning, Nate. Also a uh, resident of Guilford. Um, and Tim Turaway from the Yale School Forestry morning, uh, Urban Ecology Laboratory. And Kevin, as you know, this makes up our project team. <coughs> we wanted to. These gentlemen can join you if they like. Please, yeah. Would like to come, come up? <laughs> no. <laughs> or maybe they don't want to come up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we're here before you to kind of reintroduce the subject of coastal resilience. I know it's something that's been on our minds. Um, the town has a coastal resilience plan, as you know, which was approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, on April 15, 2015, unanimously, and incorporated as part of the town's plan of conservation and development. Um, I believe you all have my uh, our memo from October, dated October 15, which summarizes the points we want to call to your attention right now. <coughs> we, uh, notwithstanding the fact that the Planning and Zoning Commission unanimously approved the plan, making it officially, technically part of the plan of conservation and development. We believe that it's important that the Board of Selectmen also endorse this plan, approve it, act on it. Um, your endorsement reinforces the fact that this plan is the official policy of the town with regard to coastal resilience issues. Your endorsement enables for any town agencies or staff who are endowed, uh, enables them to <coughs> pursue the actions that are uh, recommended in the plan subject to their own processes. Uh, it also, we believe, enhances the opportunities that the town has for state and federal funding related to coastal resilience uh, development. <clears throat> so while we're not suggesting that you take action on this uh, right now, today, uh, we do hope that you will endorse the plan uh, at some time in the future. Consideration of the plan um, raises several important questions which we want to call to your attention right now. Um, and we want to give you an update on what is going on in terms of implementing the plan by highlighting several of the really important things which are also included in that memo uh, that we've written for you. The Planning and Zoning Commission is moving forward through the Planning Committee of the Commission with development and consideration of new zoning concepts that are recommended in the plan. There are a series of recommendations that the plan makes with regard to uh, so-called free board requirements, elevation requirements for new development, new structures, with regard to migration of tidal marshes, uh, protection of areas where tidal marshes might migrate inward as sea level rise occurs, and a number of other zoning strategies. So the planning committee um, will be very shortly taking these recommendations up, considering them, and developing uh, some proposed regulations and other actions that are under the jurisdiction of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, that's one step forward that we are making. Uh, as you just heard a few minutes ago, we are also, the town is moving forward with infrastructure improvements that are recommended in the plan. Chaffinch Island is the latest one. Old Quarry was the first. Uh, Tuttle's uh, 
Point Road will be coming along soon. <clears throat> and no doubt there'll be other infrastructure improvements that are uh, warranted as a result of the uh, phenomena that we are experiencing. We should also pursue through the Council of Governments uh, one of the recommendations that's made in the plan, which is that a comprehensive uh, look and a comprehensive strategy be developed for Route 146 improvements. This comprehensive in terms of looking at all the characteristics of Route 146, also comprehensive in terms of incorporating Brantford, because Brantford has basically the same issues we have with 146, and that perhaps would be done through the COG. So, uh, and also, of course, with DOT, since it's their responsibility. But we know that there are some short-term issues that have to be dealt with in terms of uh, flooding on 146, but in the long term, 146 will be uh, increasingly vulnerable to sea level rise and storms, and we believe a comprehensive approach is required. Um, and perhaps our first selectman can continue those discussions with our sister towns and also through the COG. Every transportation committee meeting, I keep hitting one one four. Right, so. <laughs> it's a very hot topic for it sure. Is. It is, uh, and, and it's there's some some serious is issues for sure. Anything that we recommend uh, that doesn't have the, uh, of the uh, state of DOT or whatever that doesn't have the force of law. I mean, it's just a recommendation to the state. Yes, correct. Uh, but. The, to the extent that we have a thought-out plan that's been endorsed by all the appropriate agencies, that gives our recommendations more authority, uh, as, a, uh, as, we, as we know. <clears throat> Very similarly, um, the COG, South Central Connecticut, uh, is also working on a regional resilience plan. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the regional resilience plan is uh, uh, being developed through, the, uh, through grants to the COG, Guilford's participating in that um, in that work. The consultant who helped us develop this plan, David Murphy of Malone and McBroom, is also uh, the principal uh, consultant to the COG and their regional resilience plan. Their plan will result, we believe, in some significant recommendations for infrastructure improvements, and we want to make sure through our participation in this and through the Board of Selectmen's participation and the First Selectmen's participation with the COG, that our projects move to the top of the list in terms of uh, uh, implementation. <clears throat> we have one really significant project that, that uh, was recommended in our plan that the COG is also looking at. That's the uh, tidal marsh improvements at the mouth of the West River. Uh, the development of green infrastructure there to protect our asset, our property, from further flooding. Uh, it's a very innovative uh, green infrastructure uh, improvement, and uh, we believe that the Board of Selectmen endorsement of the Coastal Resilience Plan and then further implementation and pressure through uh, our participation, including the First Selectmen's participation in this, can help move Guilford's projects to the top of the list. <clears throat> um, we also um, are interested in pursuing and implementing w one or more of the so-called neighborhood planning projects that are described in the document, uh, the Coastal Resilience Plan. One of the more interesting parts and innovative parts, but also most difficult parts of the Coastal Resilience Planning process is re the recognition that coastal resilience issues are very neighborhood specific. The types of issues that are in Soundview are very different than the types of issues on Tuttle's Point, Indian Cove, just because of the physical characteristics uh, being different. Fine-grained neighborhood planning is really important. And we'd like to begin implementing one or more of the neighborhood planning projects that are described in the plan. Uh, we are actually thinking that the Soundview Road area might be an important one to look at. Uh, it has a lot of the ingredients that make the uh, coastal resilience issue challenging, it has lots of marshes, has lots of industrial property, has potential for, uh, for transformation from industrial to other uses. These are all illustrated hypothetically uh, in the plan. We'd like to begin moving forward with one or more of these neighborhood planning projects, kind of following the model that we've used before with the Route 1 East plan, the Route 1 West plan, Cindy's familiar with that one, 
uh, Town Center South, you're all familiar with that. <laughs> Neighborhood level planning projects that, uh, that we think are appropriate and um, several of the coastal resilience neighbor, several of our coastal neighborhoods are, are ready, willing, and able, we think, to move forward on some of these things. <clears throat> We'd also like to call your attention to one of the key issues about coastal resilience in Guilford in particular is that in terms of trying to create an institutional structure for, for carrying out coastal resilience in the future. Um, the plan talks about the Hazard Mitigation Commission as being the overriding uh, agency of the town that might have responsibility for overseeing the entirety of coastal resilience, not that they would be responsible for all of the recommendations. Obviously, some relate to planning and zoning, some relate to public works, some relate to park and rec. So uh, the thought was that uh, one entity of the town should have responsibility for kind of overseeing the whole thing. <coughs> our, our discussion initially was that the Hazard Mitigation Commission uh, might be the appropriate agency to do that. Um, that's a, a discussion that's ongoing and uh, uh, the Board of Selectmen can play a big role in that, we think. <coughs> Staff training is another element that's important to coastal resilience, especially as staff uh, are uh, available and able to assist property owners. Um, thinking particularly of the engineering department and also uh, planning and environmental planning. We're frequently asked to help property owners deal with issues uh, like flood insurance, like what can they do and they can, what can they cannot do in the, in the coastal area in terms of new development. We need to make sure that we're uh, fully uh, trained in all of those issues especially where uh, state and federal rules are required. Uh, and finally, we think uh, education about coastal resilience is, should be an ongoing priority. Um, as, as you probably know, we have created a tidal monitoring uh, facility um, down at the uh, marina area. It's important to kind of keep that alive, uh, uh, report on the results of it so that we can be on top of issues related to sea level rise. In addition, perhaps through the schools and the park and rec department, uh, we'd like to look at things like uh, other educational materials, including signs and displays about flooding and coastal adaptation, so that the issue of uh, coastal resilience is, um, is one that the public doesn't forget about. Um, we don't need to be reminded through actual storm events. Um, <clears throat> those obviously do remind us of coastal resilience. Uh, but um, that's not what we want to rely on as a way of keeping this issue alive. <clears throat> so finally, um, I want to thank you on behalf of our project team uh, for your consideration of this, and uh, we're here to try to answer any questions that you might have. I, uh, the document, the plan, including all four volumes of the plan are available on the town website uh, for anyone who wants to look further at it. I don't know if Kevin or any of our other partners want to say anything, but. Um, Thank you for listening to us. Thank you. Kevin? Um, <coughs> it's available for questions, but I also want to um, add to George's statement about staff training and stuff, is that it's um, not so regulations, but also staff being aware of grants and stuff that's available to the public. So when they, after a storm, something happens, we can help provide them with sources for grants to help them rebuild and move forward with their properties. If it's like two residents in town recently got grants for elevating their houses. Um, <coughs> we should be able to provide additional homeowners that same information of, or contacts where to, to get that information from. How about grants for moving forward some of the projects that uh, George mentioned? That's part of it too. We're, and especially we're working closely with the SCROG with uh, their coastal resilience plan, which also has some grants involved with it. So we're um, trying to stay on top of that one, stay on top of their keeping our projects in the forefront of their minds there. We, I think it was in the middle of summer, we walked two of the projects that we're mm -hmm. looking at potentially having done in town. They Is there any action by this board that's required in order to facilitate seeking and, and reaching out for those types of I branches? think approval of the plan by the Board of Selectmen is the most important thing, giving it the official, you know, sanction. Again, this, the, um, doesn't mean you agree with every single recommendation of the plan, and obviously many of them are, most of them, if not all of them, require further action by various town agencies to move them forward. But 
Uh, I think it's important that the board as a whole endorse the plan in order to give it the sanction that we think uh, is helpful in that regard. Just add that, um, you know, technically, I, I checked with Chuck Anders, and technically, you really, your vote isn't required, but as Chuck points out, um, an endorsement, there's no harm in endorsing it, um, but just, just for the record, uh, in accordance with the statutes and everything, there's not a tech, because PNZ passed it unanimously, it technically doesn't require board selectmen to vote for approval, but as Chuck points out, your endorsement would be no harm. Yeah, also, this board has the right to change the plan, too. Absolutely. <laughs> or, implement, and, or implement parts of it or not parts of it. Pardon me? Do you have the right to change it? Yes. Uh, on a vote? I'd have to research that. You don't have to research anything. <laughs> I'm telling you, this board has the right to change it and, and, and vote on it and then approve it. So uh, I'm just I think, I'm yeah, Pam's giving talking, that information. Pam's talking is members, kind, so. of, kind of fairly technically about the plan being made part of the plan of conservation That's and correct. development. Yeah. And there's a specific set of standards and requirements according to state law. The key, to me, the key at this point is not the, not whether it it's already part of the plan of conservation and development according to the state law. Mm -hmm. The more important thing is the is the over is the is the endorsement of the plan by the board of selectmen to indicate to the, the folks that we've sort of tried to outline in this memo that this is your desire to move forward with this. Bless you. Okay. After we, assuming we would endorse, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if not all of it, whatever, I mean, assuming we endorse it, is there any action of this board that would encourage and or mandate a particular project within that plan? Not just, not the action of the board solely. Mm -hmm. It's what it does, it's sort of offer, like, it kind of, analogously, it sort of suggests to Joe that he has the he has your backing when he goes to the cog to ask for money for the for the for the West River project. It's, he's not just out there on his own asking for that. He's also he can point well, to the fact it, that the board of selectmen. But then to actually implement that project will require further action by the board of selectmen. I'm sure that's town property. You know, if it involves town funding, obviously receiving town funding requires. You know, so there are lots of further steps with regard to all of these things. Okay. So a motion to uh, endorse is really just a show of support from the board? That's correct. And let us know we can go after grants for the different areas here. If we don't have that, it makes it hard for us to, we have to go individually saying, what, do you got, what does the board think of us going after a grant for a certain project? But shouldn't they still do that anyway? But you still have to come back here. Correct. Yeah. For the approval to go for a grant. Right. Right. Do you have any problem with making that motion? No. I, 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 I think perhaps, I don't know how the other members feel. Well, you might want to wait a meeting or two, but uh, just to digest it. Yeah, I'd, I'd, like to I'd, I'd rather wait a week, a uh, meeting or two. Okay. A uh, couple of questions that I have. <clears throat> What is our role with the plan of conservation and development? It's been approved by PNZ. PNZ. Does it need to be approved by the Board of Selectmen? No. 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 It does not. Does it need to be? Correct. Okay. Is it intended that it would be reviewed and endorsed or approved yes. by the Board that's, of Selectmen? That's our intention. Those of us who have been working on this plan, that's our desire. No, I mean the, the plan of conservation and development. Yes. Okay. So is, is that to be? What's the schedule on that? What's the schedule on that? Any time. Of I'm <coughs> sorry. I, maybe I didn't understand the question. The Planning and Zoning Commission already, as Pam explained, already and unanimously approved the Coastal Resilience Plan as an amendment to the Plan of Conservation and Development. So technically, it's already part of the Plan of Conservation and Development. You're voting for it. You know, um, so reinforce, it's reinforces right. that. Mm -hmm. Yes. But my question is, do we do we have a role in either approving or endorsing the plan of conservation and development? The new, the, the new, one. new one. Yes. Yes. And if we, same. If the we, same. The same process. Yeah. Okay. There's a there's a prescribed process that you have that the 
that the uh, pro that the adoption has to go through. But most because presumably, if we do that, we will have endorsed this process. I mean, I'm not saying that we shouldn't, but I'm just, I'm <coughs> yes. just trying to understand. That's correct. The, the legal steps that take That's place. Right. This, what, this what, vote yeah. is really not so much a legal step as a no. as a policy yeah. step that endorses it for for those of us who might be in doubt as to whether you really want us to work on these things or not, uh, or even more importantly, outside agencies who might look for the board of selectmen to have endorsed it before they'll consider the, the funding and the grant request that we might make. That you but, might make up down the road. <clears throat> isn't the plan of economic development also part? Yes. And I haven't seen that either. Well, that was many years ago, the plan of economic mm, development. Yeah, but that was, that was like, at least 10 or 12 years right, ago. Right. Shouldn't that be updated that's, and be part of the plan of <clears throat> conservation That's and a question you'd ask the Economic Development Commission. Yeah. I would okay, say so. so. I would say so that's correct. before we give our stamp of approval or endorsement, to use another word, mm -hmm. uh, to the plan of uh, conservation and development, mm -hmm. shouldn't we have a plan? It's a rhetorical question. Shouldn't we have a plan yeah, of economic yeah. development update? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Well, that goes for all the towns. All the yeah. Yeah. Sub transportation sub components. Yeah, that's so a ten-year thing. <coughs> right. To and that, yeah. You know, that's my question. After Gary's question last time was, is there a schedule or a plan to bring the plan of conservation and development to the board? Of I think there should be. Yeah, that's exactly what we're kind of talking about. Mm -hmm. The new document. Well, we're kind of talking about close to resilience. Oh, no, that, I thought Gary was talking about. I, the, the I was talking about plan. Yes. yes. Charlie and I are on the, I we're on the same page. We're trying to figure out where we're, we're going, where, where you are. I mean, right. because <laughs> if we're going to have that process, close to resiliency is part of it. I mean, we mm -hmm. could go so on it to endorse it, but where is together? the big picture? Yeah, do them together. We could do that. Yeah. When is, oh, God. There's no, we don't have, the, the sort of analogously, the Planning and Zoning Commission has approved the new plan of conservation and okay. development. Your, the, the, I, the, what, what you're suggesting is you also want to have an opportunity to vote on the Board of Selectmen does. <clears throat> well, it would seem a little bit irrelevant, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like this is relevant, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many parts to it more than just planning and zoning. Right, oh, absolutely. That's why. Right, that's why the select, That's why the, the legislature, in their wisdom, a few years ago, created <laughs> created <laughs> this this uh, vehicle for having the board of selectmen also vote on the plan of conservation and development, as opposed to 20 years ago, it was only the planning and zoning commission uh, had, that had to vote on, it according to state law. Okay, I think you're right. I think we should table this request. Although, you know, my first feeling is endorsement. Kind of I, no, I just but, take another yeah, pass. Let, I'm fine with it. Let's get a little more information yeah. where the big picture is. Yeah. You know, where, where the whole plan is. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're actually already uh, implementing. We are. I mean, I mean, look at the first page. Yes. yes. First page is already done. Well, not done, but we're moving. The, the, like yeah. the planning and zoning right. part is right. just just beginning. But yes. Well, if you look at uh, the road improvement. The road improvements. Yes. Absolutely. Definitely. Well, actually, not, before the plan was written. The yeah, that's a old quarry. We acted sure. on these. Yeah, things. yeah, and that's I mean that's only a portion of the roads that we actually have listed in the whole plan, though. Between that and the hazard mitigation plan, there's other coastal roads too, which are subject to flooding too. Yeah, and so. a lot of it depends on money. Oh, correct, yeah. correct, and that's most importantly Route 146. Yeah. 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 In lieu of any vote today regarding endorsement and everything, I personally would encourage any any grants or for you to pursue any of those okay. types of things mm -hmm. that are out there. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't. Uh, They're I, probably going to need the endorsement, though, in oh, order yeah, to absolutely. be successful yeah. but in I, grants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> speaking as a, a member of the COG, um, they definitely want the Board, in this our case, the board of selectmen Governing to sign on on this. Yeah, yeah. Right. so Absolutely. that's why we have to do it. And I think we, we should resign. We should yeah. know. I think the sooner the better yeah. that we endorse it. I mean, I, I, I think we can put on the agenda for next meeting and then 
we don't we didn't technically put on your agenda today vote on i know right, right. okay any other questions Gary? Yeah. yes uh, george mm -hmm. uh, under the uh, neighborhood planning projects yes would they be done under the planning committee of pnc under the hazard mitigation would they be an independent body i mean what what format would that well, that's take a, a question we've been debating among ourselves we don't really have a uh, clear idea of how to do that. The model that we've had in the past has been like Town Center South, Route 1 West, where the Board of Selectmen have appointed a study committee. We've come before you and asked you to appoint a committee uh, that would include property owners and others in the neighborhood, economic development, preservation, a balanced group of people, which then would develop a scope of work. If it required uh, funding, then we'd look for outside funding or come to the board of selectmen for funding, as we have done from time to time. That's probably the process that would follow. The first step would be a board of selectmen to appoint a study committee. So, and first step would be to decide what neighborhood we want to do first. Um, the plan, if you if if you recall, especially in the appendix, has two detailed um, neighborhood plans: one for Soundview and one for Seaside Avenue. <laughs> Soundview has uh, the more of the economic development components to it. Uh, it seemed to be a little bit easier to handle. Seaside is a much more complicated uh, study, so therefore that's why we talked about Soundview in this document. But again, it would be up to the Board of Selectmen to decide where we would go first with this and then do a study committee. Okay. I mean, some of these actually may be at a different level. It's a higher level than others. Maybe just at the neighborhood level within their associations dealing with issues mm -hmm. of um, thing of Prospect Avenue and Sitchum's Head there, where where you park your cars is low lying, but your house elevation is high enough where you're not going to flood in your house. Where as a neighborhood, they might need to find or look for a higher ground parking area for their cars, where they leave for the night and spend the night in their house with sort of living on an island situation there. So those are um, two extremes to the neighborhood issue there. Um, others would be like Tuttle's point, um, looking for a second way out during a storm of some paper roads which might be made to um, dirt road or temporary roadways. So there's different levels of planning. Some may involve the town, some may be, be part of an association um, looking into their own specific issues. <coughs> okay. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Okay. <coughs> item, <coughs> excuse me, item eight. Appointments and uh, resignations. I have 8.1 act on a uh, resignation received from Robert Gould from the Shellfish Commission. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 With regrets? With regrets. He's Thank you. Just, you got too busy to keep doing it. Uh, item 9 request for the use of town property. Uh, uh, 9-1 with the uh, added to the agenda to 9-4. I would <coughs> move that we approve the uh, four sign requests and the use of the t transfer station for Christmas tree recycling as uh, presented in the agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 On the correspondence, we have uh, two. 10.1, the building officials monthly report, and the 10.2, public works Department <coughs> Other correspondence I go with you. Okay. Old business? Anything? Okay. New business. I have none at the moment other than uh, remind everybody election day is uh, November 3rd. Please exercise your right to vote. I think we'll meet before then at this time. Uh, public forum, limited to uh, three minutes or any item. Yeah, Joe, don't well, we meet November, November 2nd. 2nd but it well, no, be, but it won't be aired. It won't be publicized. Yeah, it won't, believe me, yeah. it won't be aired. Yeah, oh, my God, I can't believe it's already <laughs> yeah. in October. Wow. <laughs> it will probably be aired. I'm not going to go into that. Okay. Public forum. I don't see anybody missing the address of the board. A call for a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone.